note itself is like a passport. Let her rip! so fast. I'll be right back. <laughs> that looks good enough to eat. Yes, I could say the same about you. Mm -hmm. Stop stalling and get out there and read it to them. Really, Paul? What? It seems braggy. Don't blame me. I tell one person at the embassy and it spreads like gonorrhea. <laughs> We're celebrating you tonight, my darling. That's why they're all here. Yes, I know. But still, we don't need to make a meal out of it. So, when are we going to hear this famous letter? Paul can't stop talking about it. <laughs> I know he's your boss, buddy, but you must take everything he says with a grain of flirt itself. <laughs> Roblox is better than my momors. And if she wasn't already dead, she would die if she knew it was made by an American. From Pasadena, no less. <laughs> Please, Julia, read it to us. Yes. We're all so proud of you. Yes. Mm. That's all right. Oh. <laughs> Riesling, Anders? Oh, why not? I know it's a little fruitier than I expected, but it's still got balls and it's wonderful with the fish. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's Mrs. Child, we have spent months looking over your superb French cookbook, studying it, cooking from it, and we have come to the conclusion that it is a, a unique, unique book, book that we would, from our please, <laughs> be very proud to have on the Knopf. Is it Knopf or Knopf? No one knows. Enough. <laughs> As it turns out, my time in France was put to confuse Paul. Worked like a dog spreading American goodwill across Europe whilst I ate. <laughs> oh. I get it. Keep reading. I'm so proud of you, kid. Oh. <laughs> I have been authorized to. Oh. Hello. We consider it the best and only working French cookbook to date. Which will do for French cooking here in America what Rombauer's The Joy of Cooking once did for standard cooking. And we will sell it that way. Oh. When do we get it in Norway? <laughs> it is certainly a beautifully organized, clearly written, wonderfully instructive manuscript. You have already revolutionized my... Is everything all right, Lala? But that was DC. Summoning me back for a meeting. What do you think? Oh, Paul. What does that mean? We could be back in Paris in a month. <laughs> <laughs> we will miss you. Yeah. <laughs> back to Paris! Hurrah! It's wonderful. Thank you, dear. You look lovely this morning. I sure hope so. 
Not camera ready, as they say. Nonsense. Hmm. What are you going to talk about? I guess the book. That's why I'm there, isn't it? To promote the book. Before everyone forgets about it completely. Such an old gas bag, that man. WGBH is a fine institution. And still television. Public television. It's television. Not everyone agrees with you, darling. They just loves her TV. She's a widow. She needs company. Maybe I tell the soul in the air story and where to milk the part when I cried with sheer deliciousness and he didn't know what was wrong. Don't besmirch it. Oh, come now. I've told that tale a thousand times. It's sort of become my signature. It's almost like you took my virginity twice. First by fucking me and then by feeding me. It's mildly depressing. Taking something so seminal to you, to us, and turning it into a television anecdote for Prince Albert, his ghastly show. But you watch. I wouldn't miss it for the world. That was delicious, darling. Now, wish me luck. Empty canvas awaits on the slow train towards death that is forced retirement. This is you and me both. Mm. Has it really only been a year? Julia Child. Yes, Mrs. Child. If you head down the hallway, you'll find the green room. Thank you. I look forward to watching. Oh, that's awfully kind of you. How lovely. <laughs> I've made a dozen or so of your recipes so far. I've never been to France, but now my husband says we don't have to. Tell your husband that Julia Child says he must take you to France. <laughs> yes, and that's an order. <laughs> just wanted to come by and say hello. Oh. It was my small idea to have you on the show. Oh, how lovely. And your name, dear? I'm Alice Naiman, associate producer. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. It's funny you should say that. You wouldn't happen to have a hot plate, would you? Do we have a hot plate? Julia Child is asking for a hot plate. Of course she is. The BBC is making docs about prize-winning scientists while we're peddling cookbooks. So we don't have a hot plate? I have a hot plate. I use it to boil water for my tea. Great. And we're live in five, four, three. Hello, and welcome to I've Been Reading. Class is now in session. I'm Albert Duhamel, of course, Associate Arts Professor at Boston College, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of, say, Steinbeck, Capote, Heller, or even Rand, my guest this afternoon writes cookbooks. Yes, you heard that correctly, cookbooks. Uh, to be frank, it would be rather disingenuous for me to say it's what I've been reading, as I have never actually read a cookbook. 
maybe for today, we'll rename our little program What My Wife's Been Reading. <laughs> no, but seriously, folks, please welcome my guest, Cambridge's own Mrs. Julia Child. Duke, what a lovely introduction. The Duke? Yes, isn't that what your students call you at the college? It's très charmant. Now, not to hijack the conversation, but would you happen to know where the outlet is? The outlet? Yes, to plug something in. But I don't understand to plug what in. This pop they do. Ooh. What is she doing? Nothing to it but to do it. So, I thought I'd make a classic French omelette. <laughs> Are uh, you all right down there? Mm, just a I'm not sure the cord's quite long enough. Oh, that cord hasn't. Good. Now, where were we? Uh, Omelets. Omelets, yes. Of course. I just need this sucker nice and hot. The sizzling hot. No stick pan is essential. For making an omelette. Oh, yes, of course. Keep up with me, Duke. Do you like a good omelette? Sure. Why not? Yes, I just love them. Nothing more, really, than lightly coagulated eggs. But it's a perfect meal and a lovely lunch. Why is she so out of breath? What did you have for your lunch? Uh, the tuna fish sandwich. Oh, dear. Well, I've come just in time. This is lovely and... Tender and soft, and it's going to take barely half a minute. Oh. For you, let's do three. You look like a sweet egg man to me. And then some... some salt. Fresh ground pepper. Don't be shy. Give it a good whisk. Would you like to try? Pardon? Oh, I'm going to teach you to whisk the way I was taught in Le Cordon Bleu. Like this? Oh, put some elbow grease into it. Yes, exactly that. You're a natural. And I'm French-Canadian. That's for golly, it shows. Oh. Mm. See, a great omelette needs a great amount of butter. I'd say a full tablespoon. And don't be stingy, baby. <laughs> I like to use an inexpensive no stick pan. Don't be fooled by what Boys, I call Boys, you've got to see this. Aunt Julia's on TV. But the butter generously coats the entire surface. And just before the butter begins to brown, we add the eggs. Fabulous. And then just gradually. Jerk the pan towards you. Et voila. Over she goes. And there you have it. An omelette baveuse. <laughs> Salivating, practically. Just like you are, Duke. Shall we give it a try? Yeah. It's barely takes seconds. In fact, I'm going to enjoy it, if I do say so myself. I suggest you get cracking and do the same. <laughs> oh, cracking. This is Albert Duhamel. Thank you and good day. Class dismissed. And we're out. What fun that was. Oh, dear. I forgot to talk about the book. Oh, well. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. Well, that was utterly silly. Now, if you'll excuse me. So I guess no one's been reading. Le vieux piano. To Julia. To Julia. To me. <laughs> <laughs> Marvelous fun, really. You could tell, honey. You were radiant, just glowing. 
Honestly, you seemed so relaxed. <laughs> I'd have been shaking in my boots. Hell, I was sitting in my goddamn armchair. <laughs> Good God, you were a treasured guest in living rooms all over Boston. <laughs> I'm a little jealous to have shared you, but I couldn't be more proud. <laughs> me too, me too. Here, here. That Sol Manier story gets richer and richer each time she tells it. What are you talking about? She didn't tell the fucking Sol Meunier story, Paul. She made an omelet with a hot plate on a coffee table. I mean, if it wasn't so goddamn illuminating, it would have been theater of the absurd. If the table was staggeringly low. I, we, we don't have a television, oh. Avis. And I was in the midst of a burst of creativity in my no studio. No excuse. Shame on you, Paul. Escargot. Sorry. What is it, Polsky? I kind of said two words since we left the restaurant. Honestly, I don't care that you didn't see it, really. You'd know if I was upset. I'm upset, darling. Me. I just feel so damn guilty about it. Missing it or lying about missing it? Both, you devil. Oh, forget about it, Paul. I have long ago. And getting a talking to like that from Avis, honestly. If we had a television, I would most definitely have watched it and been proud to boot. She had no right. Then let's just buy one. What? A TV, Paul. We're not suckers, Julia, falling for the latest fad. Well, maybe TV's not a fad. Good Lord, it has to be. I know I'll never buy one. Well, good night. Kiss. Deep breath. So I was covered in sweat again this morning, just covered. It is the most peculiar feeling. Deep breath. And, oh, what the heck? We're both grown ups. I haven't been in the mood, or, you know, feeling frisky. But I guess I can chalk that up to boredom, retirement in Boston, Paul lying about watching me on television. You have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're absolutely fine. You're just going through menopause. Night sweats, you do sex drive. It's all completely natural and normal. to be the benefactor of all your hard work. My wife has your cookbook. How wonderful. Doctor's office. Oh, not 
launcher back again. Damn. I really thought raising the counters in the kitchen would make all the difference. No, it's not my back. My back's fine. Oh. Then what? Are you all right? Tell me, kitten. I'm right here. Nothing, it's nothing. Silly me. Fit as a fiddle. Strong as an ox. Yes, everything's all as it should be. I just... I actually called because I'm off to Savanos to pick something up for dinner. If any requests? I trust you. See you later, then. Delightful surprise. I saw you the other day on I've Been Reading. Oh, kidding. You watched that? It is sort of awful, but it coincides nicely with nap time. You are so funny. Plugging in that hot plate with your tush right in my face, hilarious. It's nice to see you. Oh, I made a French omelet for Norman this morning. It came out perfect. She's magnificent. I could just eat her up. Well, you cooked her, I bet she'd be delicious. <laughs> you saw Dorothy Zimberg today? Coming out of Savanaugh's as I was going in. Was she with that awful baby? Oh, Paul, she was precious. And you'll never guess, she saw me on TV. Even made Norman an omelette. That's nice. Isn't it? I thought so. This is Julia Child writing, co-author of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, and whom you so kindly had as a guest on I've Been Reading. Well, no use beating around the bush. I've had a recurring thought that I'd like to propose to you, an educational cooking show hosted by myself. Tea helped inspire you. Good order. Mm -hmm. A cooking show that would be informal, easy, conversational, and yet time to the minute. Because the French have treated cooking as a serious profession as well as an art, they are far more precise about their methods. As I conceive of cooking, the whole business comes down to a series of scenes and variations in which one learns and then varies the technique. I look forward to hearing from you. Yours, Julia Child. Feels flimsy to me, not substantive. This is public television, for God's sake. Not to sound crass, but if we were to do an educational show involving cooking and food, shouldn't we go with someone more relatable? More attractive. With a more camera-friendly look and a less distinctive sound? Shorter. Let's face it, look who's on television. I. 
Well, I see that, but the truth of the matter is we've gotten 27 letters from hungry viewers who want more Julia Child. Really? That many? Are you sure about those numbers? They're on my desk, Russ. I can go get them for you right now, if you want. Surprise 27 people watch us. <laughs> <laughs> that joke is a no-no, you know that. <laughs> Twenty-seven, huh? I did the craziest thing. I sort of sent in a proposal to WGBH about doing a show of my own. A cookery show. What's a cookery show? Oh, I was hoping you'd oh. tell me. You get a drop of that on me and I'll kill you. Oh. 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 What were you thinking? Well, that's just it. I wasn't. Don't you have a cookbook to write? Well, to be frank, I think Simka's lost interest like the rest of the world. Why we thought that Mastering needed a follower. We're desperately behind. And yet you're out here washing your car. Yes, well, it wasn't going to wash itself. You have a living, breathing husband. Who would turn this into the restoration of the Sistine Chapel, and I need the car this year. Oh, Julia! Damn it! <laughs> Cookbooks need lots of chocolate recipes, Simka. The moment of truth. Superb. Shit. I've just taken it out of the oven, Simka. It looks subpar. I don't know what you did. Mine looks incroyable. What I did is follow your directions to the letter, my dear. Your measurements have not yielded. Mais Julia, you know this. It's not French to be so exact, huh? Well, I couldn't disagree with you more. It is the exactitude that is what makes French cuisine so elevated. Yes, but you're forgetting the je ne sais quoi. I can't very well instruct our readers to have je ne sais quoi. No? <laughs> oh, Simpa. We can't use a recipe that I'm not utterly convinced American women can make if they precisely follow the directions. That's what people love about the first book, its dependability. Is it you meet out? No, not a cloud in the sky. Then I don't know. Make it again. I will make it again. I'll make it a hundred times until I get it exactly right. It's only one recipe, ma chérie. Oh, it's not one recipe, ma chérie. And I'm starting to lose my patience with your unwillingness to see that. An imbécile. Fuck a duck. A little American, madame. La pauvre. Oh, C'est possible. Mais il est fort difficile d'écrire un livre de cuisine avec quelqu'un qui n'a pas, je ne sais pas quoi, un, un brin d'intuition. C'est un peu comme faire l'amour avec un Allemand, quoi. Oh, thank goodness you called back. I didn't mean to hang up some car, I just... Well, I lost my cool. It happens. I'm a healthy girl with loads of steam. And see, at this rate, I'm just deeply concerned that we'll never finish our big little project. Hello? Hello. Who is this? This is Alice Neyman calling from WGBH. Alice, it's so good to hear from you. What gives me the pleasure? Well, I received your letter a few days back, and... and... I was wondering if you'd be willing to come in so we can talk face to face. That sounds lovely. Good morning. Mrs. Child, Alice is expecting you. She's first door on the left. Thank you. When's your husband taking you to France? Come in. I have a cake. Would you mind? 
goodness. It's called the Queen of Sheba Cake. Sounds so exotic. Well, it's not really. It's actually quite simple, which is one of the reasons I adore it. Made primarily of lots of yummy chocolate and almonds, and if you ask me, it's the best drawn chocolate cake you've ever tasted. Uh, walk with me to the kitchen. I read it right away. And I could see it, but I'm the only girl here, Julia. It's hard for me, and you have to understand, it was a challenge just to get them to take you seriously, which they clearly did. But we've gotten 27 letters. Is that a lot? Yes. Really? Sounds rather meager. For us, people, women especially, want to hear from you. They do. They do. I'm afraid that is the end of the good news. Oh, I see. They are all such snobs. <laughs> I'm sorry I dragged you down here for this. I just... I wanted to tell you in person. Oh, well, thank you. I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep pushing. You are onto something so big. I'm just sorry that my colleagues don't have the vision to see it yet. Hmm. Where are these gentlemen? Come. Is that everyone? Yes, yes it is. Wonderful, then I'll begin. I've heard from Miss Name, mm -hmm. Alice. Alice gave me the diagnosis. Dead on arrival. I get it, I look in the mirror every day. But I'm not giving up so easily. One of the advantages of looking like me is that you learn at a young age how not to take no for an answer. I'm sorry? Make a trial episode and I'll pay for all of it. Food, equipment, the whole kit and caboodle. Air it, and if it gets traction, well then, we'll go from there. What kind of cake is that? Well, say yes, and not only will I tell you, but I'll give you a most generous serving of the most delicious gateau you've ever tasted, and I'll even share the recipe. You see? What makes this dessert so absolutely wicked is its simplicity. Your wife could whip it up and it would turn out just like this one on her first try. I'm not married. Oh, well, then I'll share the recipe with you. <laughs> the trial episode, huh? I think it's a brilliant idea. Oh, really? Yes. I wish I had thought of it. With Mrs. Child covering the cost, we have nothing to lose. Look, we've gotten more letters for this woman than any other guest in the history of I've Been Reading, and that includes some blue-chip authors. I just want to say, for the record, I'm against this. And no offense, but is this really what we think public television should be doing? Cut me a slice. Hallelujah. And? Mm -hmm. That's my happy boy. Funny thing happened. Hmm? You'll never guess who I got a call from. James Beard. Mm, no, but I like the way your mind works. Mm. You're just out of the blue. Well, who called you? WGBH. Or rather, Alice Naiman, one of the producers there. Hmm. Anyway, it's the craziest thing. They want me back. And I've been reading? Hmm. To promote what? It'll be years before you and Simka finish that damn book. Exactly. Well, there's two beats ahead of me. Hmm. Apparently, they've gotten an enormous response from my little omelet-making performance. Enormous? How enormous? 27 letters. Hmm. They want to test giving me my own show. Oh, naturally, I was surprised, but it seems awfully fun, and I did love doing it. Well, Paul, I need you here to be my partner to navigate all of this for me. 
So I'm forced to retire, and you go back to work. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. I won't do it if you don't want me to, but maybe mm -hmm. together. And if you don't like it, even if WGBH chooses to take it forward, I won't do it. It'll be your call. I'm awfully proud of you. <laughs> Truly. Oh. But as merrymaking as it sounds, I think it's ultimately going to end up a distraction from the serious work you are doing with Simca. Oh. You are changing the way Americans eat. That's goddamn huge. Maybe when you finish. If we finish. You asked me to be your partner. And as your partner, it would be shameful of me not to tell you how I really feel. And how I really feel is this, darling. I don't think it's a good idea. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for being honest with me. You didn't think it was a good idea? Well, apparently not. The proposal you pitched to them. Kick me when I'm down, why don't you? So you see, I'm in rather a pickle. A Paul pickle. It's always a Paul pickle. Oh. How much longer? Oh, it's another mile. Um. Oh. Where'd you pick up this nasty habit? Shanghai. Oh. They want to shoot a trial episode next week, no less. Oh, shit. And I do so want to do it. I can hardly explain it. When I try to put it into words, it sounds rather banal, even to me, but there was something about being in front of a camera like that that just felt right. It was as if I came into focus. That's fucking beautiful. Oh. You may need to help Paul see what you've articulated so artfully. Don't look at me, honey. I'm the third wheel that crashes your dinners. Oh, nonsense. You're the one who figured out how to get mastering published. You know what you need. You need someone Paul really respects to rally his troops. It's time to bring out the big guns. Goddamn part one ten years, and we're already fading from the discussion. What discussion? The discussion of how we eat. It's not a discussion. It's never been a discussion. Your book made it seem like we could start having that discussion for about five minutes, but it's not a discussion as yet we have in this country. Well, it ought to be. Right. Mm. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not wearing one of those. I told you this, really. Part of the fun. For you, fine. <laughs> Sometimes when I think the choices I made and the choices Paul made, the choices life made for us, I fear at the end of the day that it's all going to add up to nothing more than lying flat on a shelf with remainders. Julia. Oh, but at this stage of my life, I don't want to feel invisible. I want to feel relevant. I want to be relevant. Well, then, you have to do it. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh. oh, that drawn butter is criminally good. <laughs> oh, Judith. A more liberal dipping will really bring out the sweetness of the lobster meat. Hello, me. Oh. Mm. There's more flesh in there if you're willing to suck it out. Mm. So how can I be of service? So you came all the way to Boston for that? Sometimes it's better to have difficult conversations face to face. Oh, 
Oh, no. Mm. Yes. They were that disappointed. They were really hoping you'd consider their offer. Especially as, as they see it, you have nothing to lose. Dinner is served. Dark meat? Mm, of course. Mm, yum. It's just one episode. Our answer is no. Shoot it next week and then you can walk away. No questions asked. I said no. I'm beginning to think the trip was to see us, not them. Oh, Paul. Well, look, Judith, I have enormous respect for you, for Anne Frank alone, but... How can I be so base as to let my good wife hawk her wares like a door-to-door -door salesman on television? Bon appétit, everyone. It's public television, Paul. Its mandate is to educate, as yet. It hasn't figured out how to do that without putting people to sleep. But this, this amorphous thing they're proposing could be anything. You, too, can make it anything and do something to better this still young country while you're at it. You were a diplomat for so many years. Think of it as cultural diplomacy. And Julia as our attache. Diplomacy. That's what it is, isn't it? Our time in France changed us both in such a profound way. What we eat is so deeply connected to how we see ourselves, to our, our role in our society. Imagine. So true. And yet I've never heard it articulated so beautifully. No. Oh. I can almost see it. Earthy, yet international. A budding rose in a forest of dandelions. A beacon shining her light into the darkness of the American kitchen. It's too much, Paul. I really think her original impulse was the right one. Can't even fathom it at this point of our lives. But you're a star. So should we say yes? It has to be rarefied. And Francophile. Of course. Absolutely. If she's going to do it, she needs to do it right. Keep it smart, keep it true. At the same time, my love, I do think it should be a show where any old American housewife in the country could make whatever it is I'm making. Brilliant. French food for everyone, not just the White House. And yet, at the same time, highly discerning. Highly. You can see it, can't you? No. Nope. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can. Yes. <laughs> to Julia and her Michelin chicken. To Julia. To us. should show it to some people, a gallery. This is your moment, Paul. A little warm. Oh. 
Perfect. Out of the tree of life, I just picked me a plum. You came along and everything started into hum. Still, it's a real good bet. The best is yet to come. Best is yet to come, and babe, won't that be fine? Hello, oh dear. I'm hoping you can help me deposit this royalty check. Is it crying if I ask where the royalties come from? My cookbook. I wrote a cookbook. Must be some book. Wait till the warm ups on the way. Wait till our lips have met. Wait till you see that sunshine day. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hello, young man. If you wouldn't mind helping an old lady like me, I'd like to buy a television. If you'll follow me. Best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. Come the day you're mine. I'm gonna teach you to fly. We've only tasted the wine. We're gonna drain the cup dry. <laughs> Wait till your charms are ripe for these arms to surround. You think you've flown before, but baby, you ain't left the ground. Wait till you're locked in my embrace. Wait till I draw you near. Wait till you see that sunshine place. Ain't nothing like it here. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? The best is yet to come, come the day you're mine. Come the day you're mine. And you're gonna be mine. really done it. How did I have a nerve to think I could? In three, two... Welcome to the French Chef. I'm neither French nor a chef, but here I am. Oh! Let her rip! Ooh. And cut! It's perfect. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Nice knowing you. I'm sorry if I let you down. She's not a professional. <laughs> I will not be upstaged by a quiche. I was wrong about the cookbook, and I hope that I'm wrong about this television program as well. I'm not entertaining. Completely. You spend too much time on cookbooks. So what? It gives me pleasure. But the French chef matters to a whole lot of people. I liked it. WGBH picked up the show, but they can't afford to produce it, so if I want it made, I have to figure out a way to cover food and labor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when they're just enough. And I'll need to do this every week. 
We've gotten dozens of letters from viewers, and we just got a stellar write-up in the Boston Globe. Regardless of what happens, at least there will always be leftovers. Yes. I love doing my little show. It's not your little show anymore, Kim. You're teaching Americans how to taste life, and they're listening. It's the strangest thing, people thinking I belong to them somehow. What we're doing is so important. It could change the world. There's a wrinkle. Excuse me? Is the whole thing wrinkled? I'm right here, Russ. Not you, Julia, the tape.